Well, welcome everybody. I do want this to be an interactive class. Uh, there's uh, a lot about this subject. We could probably spend a whole lot of time working through what it takes to go from being a, a, a casual musician to a semi-professional musician to a nearly professional musician. But um, this class is about set lists. So for those of you who don't know who I am, my name is Pat Savelli. I joined the SCA in 1981. I've been playing guitar since 1989. You're trying to spit it out. Okay, somebody should go on mute. We'll just shoot and follow it. I will not pay you any attention because you are a bad baby. Okay. Sorry. Anyways, um, I started playing guitar in 1989 solely for the SCA. Uh, I borrowed a guitar, taught myself to play. So they say anybody who's self-taught has a fool for a teacher. So I've made it excessively hard on myself. And, uh, but I started doing music in the SCA around 1989. I've played all over the place. In 2002, I formed a, actually in, in 1992, I recorded my first album with a group of local SCA musicians. And we did another album in 96. In 2002, I formed a band. The band is still going strong 18 years later. It's called Fintan. We play Irish pub music, sea shanties, that sort of thing. And we have seven albums to our credit. And I quit counting live paid performances somewhere around 500 ish and i have no idea how many times i've performed in the sca many many more times than that so one of the things that i i see frequently is that people don't really have a good concept of how to put together a performance and a performance let's let's kind of broadly just say a performance is any time you're playing and someone is listening. That's a really broad definition, but you could be called upon at a moment's notice. I've certainly been sitting in the back of a court and the king said, hey, play a song. We have some, we have to go change clothes, but we don't want to break up court. Come up here and do a three minute song. Okay, pull out a three minute song, go up and play, you're done. Or anytime your performance could be, anytime you're asked to perform, hey, could you do three songs at feast? Could you do a half hour set? Would you like a slot? Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. So that's what we're talking about performance. I'm teaching this class because this overlooked concept of how to build a set list is something that I see a lot of people struggle with. And the first kind of thing you see is people, when they're asked to perform something, immediately have a vapor lock while they're trying to figure out what they're going to play. So the simple solution is to build a set list, to have set lists. So why is it really important? So I, I'm sure that there are people who've done music over long periods of time who will just say, oh, I just wing it, it's always worked out. Hey, good for you. I'm not a wing it kind of guy. Almost all the professional musicians I have ever met don't wing it. They build, plan, and execute song lists, set lists in a professional manner, and they practice them until these things seem like they're off the cuff. Every joke you've ever heard in almost any performance by any pro was practiced well ahead of time. Banter on stage, recover all that stuff. So the set list is a way for you to craft and have handy something that you can use when you're asked to play. Now, if we take it to its really simplest piece, its very first component, you have to play one song. So I'm gonna, if any of you, if, if you've pulled out or if you have my hand out, I, I use a term, my band uses it, I've always used it amongst the musicians that I learned to play from, and the term is called a crush piece. A crush piece is a piece you know, forwards, backwards, inside out, you could play it in your sleep, you could play it when you're half dead, you could play it when you're sick. It's a song that you can always execute and you execute it well because you've practiced it to the point where you could play it in a place where you couldn't even hear yourself and the muscle memory would work. You could sing it or play an instrument with it, whatever. I had an experience, I played at the Green Dragon about three years ago down at Gulf Wars, and I had never seen the venue, so stupidly, when I was asked if I wanted to play, I said, sure, I'm a veteran performer, right? So I built up a set list and you play in this balcony. You can't actually see the audience if you're playing guitar, you'd have to pitch over and you're playing out into the second story of a giant room and the sound just goes out there and it never comes back. 
there's no sound return at all. And there's no monitors. There's microphones so they can hear you down there. It's a lovely venue. I just was very ill prepared. But I couldn't hear myself play. I could hear myself sing through the bone induction, but I could literally not hear my guitar. So I adjusted my set list a little bit and played only songs that I could play if I was in a Jedi blast helmet. And I played my set and I thought it was one of the worst sets I'd ever performed. And the crowd went crazy. That's not so much a testament to me being a great bard. It's just about a lot of practice and prep and having a set list of songs that I could just go to and say, okay, I got to play six songs. Boom. Half hour set. Knock it out. So crush pieces are those songs that you have played all your life, that you have worked on relentlessly and ruthlessly, and that you can always play. And they should be tight. And they should matter almost not for the circumstance. If you don't have any of those, you should work on getting one. You should have three. Eventually, you should build up a set list that's nothing but crush. But we use a term in building set lists, all killer, no filler, right? So there's fill songs and not fill songs. So I just want to make that term. When you're building set lists, you have to be able to have some way to codify your songs. You can make up your own system. I play an instrument and I play in a band. So we codify songs by key, which is one way to do it. If you're a pure vocalist and you don't own a pitch pipe, a chromatic pitch pipe, you can get them for about 10 bucks. I ordered one from someplace in England and it showed up in two weeks, even in the current state of affairs. And a chromatic pitch pipe is a little round disc, I should have grabbed mine, that you blow into and it creates a note, plays every note in the chromatic scale. And you say, well, I just sing, why do I care? Okay, well, one, a pitch pipe helps you sing the same way every time, heading towards that crush category. And two, you could codify your song. I sing this song low, it's a Stan Rogers piece. I sing this song high, et cetera. Because if you do 10 songs in a row in the key of B, almost no matter how engaging you are as a performer, after two, you're just background noise. You have to vary up your listening experience for your audience. You have to take them on a little bit of journey. So we could probably talk a lot about keys, but keying your songs or looking them up and see what key they're in. Go listen to if you learned it off a recording and you sing exactly the same as the performer is, I guarantee you it's on the internet somewhere. You can find out or find out what the starting note is. One of the things we do in Fintan is we do six part acapella songs. And the only way to do that is to key them and have a starting note. Once you start, yeah, okay, we all suffer vocal drift and all that kind of stuff, but keying your songs helps you organize them. And that's going to be important when you when we get to the part where we're going to talk about, because most of this class is going to be about practically looking at set lists. So the second thing you need to know is how long is the song? Everybody's got a smartphone these days or a stopwatch or something. You got a clock on the wall. Time your performance of every single song. And then every time you perform it, every time you're practicing it, time it. How much float? Plus or minus 10 seconds, who cares? Most people tend to perform faster live. So when you're building that set list, you need an insert song in case in your excitement, the crowd's awesome, they love you, and that energy makes you pick up the tempo and suddenly you're looking at 10 minutes left in a six song set for 30 minutes and you only got one song left, okay? So, Timing your songs, that's another good way to differentiate long songs, short songs, fast songs, slow songs. Tempo, now we'll talk about that a little bit, but being prepared to play, I always have set lists in my back pocket. I have them on my iPad, I have them written down, and I have some sets that I go back to over and over and over again, because the SCA in a lot of ways, if you, if you hit events, you troop around, you're not always playing the same group of people. And so something that's important to understand, this is just a little performance sidebar on your set list, is it's a bit like playing at a Ren Fair. There are bands at a Ren Fair that play the same set every other hour, every day, for the entire run of a fair. They have one set list. I'll tell you one thing about it, they're really tight and their timing is always good. As somebody who's unlikely, they're not likely to see the same people over and over and over again. However, if people are coming to see you, You've worked to the point where you've gotten this nailed down and people come to hear you. 
you should have a way to vary your set lists at least a little bit so that those returning fans who essentially are your fan base for performance, those returning fans have a little something to, to hear different, okay? So I always have a one song. I have a little list of single songs that I always have handy. Then I have three songs. That's my general campfire rule at Penzik. I have a set list. I go in with Lady Finwala is on this call. She's one of my Bardic Storm buddies. We have a little group. We go around, play camps at Penzik and the like. So we have kind of a rule. We'll, we'll play one song. If the people really like us, we might play a second song. If they still have not kicked us out of their camp, we will play a third song. And no matter what, after that, we are done. You know, don't be the, don't be the bard that won't leave. Don't be that guy. There's a lot of really subpar bardic in the SCA by its nature of how kind it is to the people performing. I don't think that's a negative, but, but those people lack self-awareness when they are not doing well. A set list can also help you with that. So have some prepared set lists. Have a little list. What's your one go-to song that you know you're going to kill it? What's a three set list where you're going to say, all right, I'm going to open with something that's maybe not my out of the box top song, but something good, then something different, and then something to close. Three song sets are incredibly powerful. Uh, myself, when I first got back to Penzik, I took a long hiatus from Penzik. And when I first went back the first year, Master Lewis Blackmore and I played 30 camps in six nights. We couldn't speak by the end of Penzik because we broke some of our own rules, like not by playing more than three songs. We went to a camp, some friends of ours, notoriously to hate bards. And seven songs in, we realized we had made a terrible error. <laughs> but having a three song set and then maybe even having a six song list for like that half hour slot, which appears is really useful. Okay. Before we build a set, let's talk about what do you do between songs. So let me tell you some things. First, let's talk about some things not to do when you deliver. So you've got a set list. I will tell you that a lot of pros, including my band, and we, we, see, we have been told that we seem so spontaneous. It's absolute fiction. We are not spontaneous at all. Spontaneity is not generally good. Um, Always start by introducing yourself plainly and simply so people know who you are. Don't start by apologizing about how bad you're going to be. Please stop doing that. I teach that in my performance class. Just don't do it. So, I'm William of Fairhaven. Thanks so much for having me. I'm going to do a little song called Step It Out, Mary. It's an Irish pub tune, and it's got all the good Irish virtues of insanity, forced marriage, and, and suicide. Here we go. And off you go to play Step It Out, Mary, my, one of my crush pieces that I could play under any circumstance. Okay, so what, do you, what else could you do? A little history. Where'd you learn this song? Oh, this song is by one of my favorite bards. Maybe you've heard of, maybe you've heard of him as Owen Allen from North Shield or, or whoever. What you have to be careful about is not taking very much time and you should time your banter. And I know that sounds stupid, 15, 20 seconds. One of the things that we must compete with as performers that we didn't have to compete with 30 years ago is this thing. And I have to hold it in front of my face or the background. It's a smartphone. I literally, my band has been paid $1,000 to play in a pub and groups of people sat within reaching distance of the band who came to hear us and somebody at the table sat like this and ate French fries and hit the, and never looked up for three and a half hours. Your goal, why we're talking about all these things, performance, set list, is you, you want, this is what you want to have happen. If you can get somebody to put their phone down for three minutes, you're winning. The way you do that is you're prepared, professional, have a set list. So, but some banter is good. Where, where did you, where was your favorite place you ever played the song? I've talked about that. I, I love, most of you probably know an Irish song called Whiskey in the Jar. It's a pretty popular common tune. I played it on the beach in Jamaica for a whole bunch of locals and tourists at this. Uh, we were going to, a, we were in a wedding in Jamaica. And I, I was just sitting out on the pier playing with nobody around me. And I collected a crowd playing Irish tunes in Jamaica with the sun and the sand. And it was really something. That was too long. I had to cut that explanation down. Time your banter a little bit. You can banter with the audience a bit. 
But again, you've just got to keep those time slots really tiny or they will screw up your set list. A word on jokes. Somebody who helped me learn a lot about busking is Countess Tamara DeFrenzi in the SCA. She is now the bass player for a band called the Squirrel Nut Zippers. And she troops around the world playing uh, Cajun Zydeco music. You can look her up, Tam Tamara Nikolai. She's one of my best friends in the whole world, taught me how to busk. She was queen of the Ohio Renaissance Fair for several years and fabulous musician. But you can make a joke once in a 30 minute set. More than that, you're a comedy act. And there's nothing wrong with that. If any of you have ever seen Haywood Banks, he is the most phenomenal musician and comedian I've ever met. His shows are hilarious. If you don't know who I'm talking about, just look up Haywood Banks, H-E-Y-W-O-O-D, Haywood Banks on YouTube. Particularly his performances of 18 Wheels on the Big Rig and Toast are awesome. He's amazing, but he's trying to be a comedian who does music. I want to be the musician who maybe throws an occasional cute one-liner like somebody you're going to talk about, say, I'm going to do a song that I learned at my mother's knee or some other low joint, and you move right on. Whether the audience gets the joke or not isn't that important, you know. So decide how you want your set list to assemble and pinch in a little bit of banter on your twos and threes and have banner you go back to. Just like your set song should have banner you can snap off that's easy. Because if you make your brain do too many things in a performance, you're going you're gonna to have trouble. And that's just kind of the nature of it. So now we're going to construct a set list. You want to take your listener on a journey. And what I mean by that is a journey of context, a journey of tempo, a journey of style, a journey of melody, familiar, not familiar etc. And it, it's important to consider some of this stuff because when you are looking at a set, I, and I've seen a lot of musicians, well, I have my style. I'm going to play all death dirges for two hours. Yeah. And you can't talk to a lot of these people. And when they fail, they don't understand why, because they don't want to hear it. And part of it is preparation. I mean, period. The, the musicians who are consistently amazingly successful, if you look at bands that have stood long periods of time, even if they've had their challenges, but why is their music still listened to? Why do people still pay to go see them? It's because they're, they go out on stage and they deliver a show. It's not just a collection of songs that you may or may not have some familiarity with. Your set list should define a, a show. I'm not the greatest musician, but, but my band puts out a hell of a lot of energy. And the crowd gets that. If you are a big ball of negativity going into a performance, guess what? You know, I, I, you know, I, every now and then a good, you know, lay your head on the railroad track song is okay. But when people talk about, well, I do this style and that's my thing and you just don't understand. And I say, you're right, I, I don't understand because you're failing miserably after song one or two. So as you look at your repertoire, laying it out into, a, into something you can work with, having some things, and you can make your own things, but tempo, style, key, length, okay? And if you have an opportunity to play, sometimes a radio style methodology is a good way to go, where you're gonna play three to four minute songs you know, if someone says, hey, do one song and you bring out the horse tamer's daughter, I'm just going to shoot you. It's that's a ridiculous thing to do to anybody. And even the best performers of it, it's 15 minutes long. That's not, this isn't your wedge to get in front of everybody and show them how awesome you are. You have to earn your audience and that's not the right way to do it, in my opinion. So if we take our songs and we could arrange them, my band uses a spreadsheet. But when we were doing our first album in 1992, um, I think Lotus was maybe one of the first spreadsheets I ever used. It might have been uh, Practical. That's an ancient. Anyways, we used three by five cards. And I just realized, let me, let me grab my, because I had to switch computers at the last minute, I need to pull my... Uh, my file 
off of my other computer. But if any of you have my handout, you can see, and I'll pull it up here and start sharing it. But I, I did a little one uh, for Step It Out, Mary. Step It Out, Mary is a nice Irish tune. It's written by a guy named uh, Danny Doyle. And it's key of C. It's major. It's medium tempo. Crowd favorite. It's fast. It gets people tapping their toes. And it's an easy, short song. It's under three minutes. That's an excellent space. Three to three and a half is a great spot for a crush piece if you can do one. Now, if your specialty is something like storytelling, there are some storytellers I've seen who've managed to crunch down or tell short stories and say five under six. Six is my limit for almost any kind of song outside of a smash set ender um, where you might have done a big performance and you want to go out with something smashingly awesome. You really want to blow the place up. You want to suck all the air out of the venue. So I, we have some songs like that. So let me just grab this file. So organizing all your songs some way, you can make up your own method. Again, you could say, I'm going to do it by, so style, style of song is a good way to pick. Is it, is it medieval? Is it pop? Is it country? Is it rock? Is it soft rock? And something that I will say in my examples here, I'm going to use songs that are probably known by everybody on this, but you can, the idea is just so that you understand structurally kind of what I'm, what I'm talking about. Okay. I think that's the drive. Nope. Where'd it go? There it is. Okay. So I'm going to use really popular songs, but understand, and something that this goes to is you should set up set lists for the venues you're planning on performing in. So in my band, we have, we have pub set lists. We have party set lists. We have festival set lists that are very different. Yes, they contain a lot of the same songs, but a one hour slot at the Dayton Celtic Festival is very different than a three hour slot at the Dublin pub in Dayton. And you need to understand that and have kind of a way so that you say, okay, if I'm gonna go stand for half an hour and perform in the performing arts tent where people come at Penzik to listen, where they're coming to see you, or they're at least coming to see a performer, that's a different set list than, hey, can you jump up in front of court here and knock out a couple of songs to keep the audience warm? Those are very different things. What I might perform at the performing arts tent is country. It's a country mile from what I'm going to do if somebody asks me to jump up in court, because I can tell you, if I'm going to jump up in court, I'm going to play fast, lively, punchy music, no ballads, no finger pick. Nothing lilting. It's going to be get on it, grab the audience, take them for a short ride and get out versus at the performing arts tent where people are attentive. You've got an enclosed space where I might do Scarborough Fair finger style. I might do Bonnie Light Horseman or some ballady thing because that audience can handle it. That space can handle it. So, you know, part of that is just doing some of those things. All right, let me grab my set list here off of this machine. Yeah, I got a lot of computers in the house, which is a good thing in some cases. And yeah, there it is. Where did it go? There it is. Yep. And then I'll put it on the stream. So once you get your songs. And uh, most people are pretty good with spreadsheets these days. If you want to do it on a spreadsheet, I have to tell you though, when my band does albums, we still do it old school with three by five cards or post-it notes. Um, and the reason is if you have, if, if it's just you working on your own set lists, spreadsheet or whatever, that's fine. If you are part of an ensemble group where there's two or three of you, it's a lot easier to throw some post-it notes or three by fives up on the wall that everybody can look at. Okay, so let's talk about some concepts in set list building. So we're gonna, I, I don't think I need to talk anymore about single song. Your single song should be a, your strongest piece. You should have three or four of them and they should be ones you can just pull out at a moment's notice. We're gonna pass that. The most common set that I play in the SCA is a three song set. 
So the first, there's some concepts in building set lists that, where's my USB thingy? There it is. The first most common concept is your opener. And we label songs when we do set listing, we label songs as this is a potential opener. Opener songs are usually upbeat, major key, uh, moderately cheerful. They don't have to be totally cheerful, but, or have a hook. Like maybe you're gonna open with a song that in your locality, a lot of people know and like. Maybe it's a sing-along. It's, you want something that catches the audience in your opener. Um, and you should label songs, potential opener. Usually in my set, it's the second strongest song in a three song set. It's my number two song that I'm gonna go to. It's usually something major, something nice to listen to. Uh, my uh, Bardic Storm in the SCA wrote a song. It's in, the, it's in the key of E, just strong on guitar. It's strong for most people's vocals. It's big, it's all major chords largely. It's very nice to listen to. It's got an easy hook sing along. We get people going with it, all right? When you're building a set list, you build the outside and the inside. So you have opener. We're just doing three songs here. Opener, closer. This is the strongest song you got, period. You're not planning on playing anything after this. You might occasionally be tempted into an encore if the crowd's gone crazy and you've achieved your goal. Better have one. But for the most part, when you play this song, you're done. It's, it's something you're good at, something you know people like, and something you can hammer. So now we got to – and we have more than one closer. If you build set lists or mark songs, and you do in a spreadsheet and you say, hey, potential opener, potential opener, potential closer, potential closer, that means you can build several three song set lists that you can use whenever you need. Doesn't have to always be the same set list. You don't have to be the bard that's only known for one song. Hey, I have plenty of songs. When we did the Ren Fair, we played the Ren Fair for a bunch of years. We did a different half hour set list, five times a day, completely different set list every day over three days or two days on weekends. And we had people who would follow us around to see what we would play next. That's winning. You've caught somebody's attention enough for them to be interested in seeing you more than once. So now you gotta go with a middle song. Generally, whatever the stylings of your majors, your openers and closers are, your middle song should be something different. So if your opener is a major key or a, a bright song and your closer is also major key Sorry, bright song, Sorry. Then your middle song should be probably maybe a minor key, something a little slower tempo, maybe something a little darker. Uh, there's not, there's no lack for those kinds of songs around the SCA or around the con circuit. There's many great artists. Uh, my go-to among those kinds of songs, if I need to pull out a ska-esque song, a uh, lovely and talented lady named, named Cynthia McQuillan wrote a song called Sword of Your Fathers. And it's from, uh, it's, it's just one of my favorite death and depression songs of all time, but it's fast. If we can't be, we have a saying, if we can't be upbeat, we can be up-tempo. So playing a song where everybody dies quickly is generally better for your audience than playing a song where everybody dies and the song is very slow, okay? So when you start doing that, when you start expanding that conceptually, now I want to do a six song set. So song one is my opener. Song six is my closer. Song three or four is going to be your middle anchor and you fill backwards. And we're going to do an exercise because now I should be able to open this file, open my file. Uh, let's see here, USB drive. Come on. Well, come on. <laughs> it's getting there. It's just slow. It's thinking it hasn't opened this drive and all my antivirus stuff is uh, taking a look over. But anyways, so as you build bigger and bigger set lists, having timing is where it gets more and more critical. Three minutes, three or three song set, eh, 10 minutes, 12 minutes. Three song set probably should not much exceed 15 minutes. Six song sets for half hour, given a little banter. All right, let's see if this thing, what does it do? Question Why while you're getting that, bringing that up. Sure. If you're doing a three hour program at a pub, is yep. that one set or is that 
say six sets strung again together. Okay, so traditionally, uh, I'll just speak for what is in my space. I've my pub band and the pub bands we hang out with. So typically, in a three, if you so if we're playing from eight to eleven, that's a pretty common. Seven to ten or nine to twelve, you're going to play an hour twenty with a twenty minute break and an hour twenty. And one of the things that I will just kind of tell you, um, do I have another? For some reason, my I am just not having, I probably should just go pull it off of, uh, for some reason it doesn't like my, oh, come on. See, so yeah, I'm gonna just go pull it off. I'll pull it off of SCA Bardic. So typically if you're, an hour 20 is a long, run for us it's between 17 and 19 songs with banter and talking we don't do a lot of band introduction everybody knows who we are we've been playing in the space a long time um so construction of the set list is really important when you're going to play that much music and part of that is we have more than one singer which is nice so karen our other lead singer, she and I split most of the songs, but our bass player, Ryan, sings some. Our drummer, Phil, lead sings some. So we can, if you don't like my voice, you don't have to listen to it for more than a song because we rarely have the same vocalist do two songs in a row. But an hour 20, 20 off, an hour 20, hour 15, 30 off, hour 15, that break time in the center when you design a set for a performance like that is pretty critical. I've seen a lot of bands who show up half an hour late for their sets, very annoying. And then they take an hour break in the middle. We play a lot of music. We've, we've had bars tell us that, wow, you guys play a lot. We were, we played at this place in Indiana and we, we were on, it was, we were being paid to play eight to 11, $850 for three hours work. Now there's six of us. So we're not trying to make money as a band, but we were in that place at seven, we had all our gear. We were actually in at 6.30 for an 8 o'clock gig. We had our entire sound system set up and checked. We sat down, had something to eat, and we were on stage, and we hit it at 8 o'clock exactly, and we plowed through an hour 20 straight. We had a huge crowd, and when we were taking our little break, the general manager came over and said, wow, you guys play a lot. And I said, well, you're paying us to play. Would you like us to play less? No, 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 no. You guys came in on time. Yeah. You know, beyond anything else you might learn, there's a huge lack of professionalism in bardic arts, in music arts. And I learned that from a lot of other people who were pros at it. Be a pro, have a set list, execute your set list, be on time, have slices in and out. So if you're running long, you can cut, and you're running short. Don't always assume you wanna cut the last song in the set list. You almost never do, cause that's your closer, right? So, Approach it like a professional. And a professional, this is a simple definition. I teach it in some other classes. If you're being paid, you're a professional. And I mean money. Comp is not the same. Comp is semi pro, or what we call, uh, what we actually call ourselves a lot of times is we're professional amateurs, right? This isn't our day job. We're not paying the rent. Uh, the band pays out about three grand to every member a year. And we call it on our taxes. So we are professional musicians, okay? It's a simple, but have your set list and have some, and Karen, uh, our lead singer codes the set list. She's got colors, keys, notes, and she's got songs marked for cut because somebody comes up and asks, Hey, would you take requests? My answer is always only if I know them. And, and then maybe sometimes we play a request or maybe sometimes we play a song from the first set in the second set because somebody showed up late and really wants to hear, they want to hear the wild Rover. They want to hear whiskey. Okay, fine. So if your set list is built so that you can interchangeably pull songs in and out of similar styles and spacing, then none of these things cause you any anxiety. So that's a lot to talk Hour 15, hour 20, hour 15, hour 20 with a little break in the middle. If you're playing a four hour spot at one of our local pubs, we play eight to midnight. Um, so the standard used to be nine to one in the morning. And back in the day when we started, yeah, there were still crowds around midnight to one. Sometimes you've got a late crowd. Anymore, you're playing to the wait staff. And we talked to the pubs and said, look, we're just not interested. 
they said, well, that's what we, we're going to have. I said, okay, thanks. We'll, we'll, I hope you can find a band that wants to play that. Most of them all came back and said, okay, we want you guys. And so we play eight to 12. Now you're in a four hour set. So we play an hour on 20 minutes off an hour on 20 minutes off an hour on more or less two breaks in three sets and the sets are an hour. Four hours is a long time to be up on stage, but sometimes those sets are easier. Um, we play some places where it's seven to 10, it's a very casual crowd and you just, uh, you can certainly unmute your microphone, Carrie. I was listening. I didn't want to take over. Okay. So what I, did just you want, I seriously wanted to thank you for making the point about the professionalism because I've noticed so many times both professionals and amateurs don't give people the respect that they that they're that they're owed by if you're doing a gig whether you're paid or unpaid of starting on time of giving the audience your full attention of treating everybody else with respect especially the people who manage a venue thank oh, you yeah. for making that point yeah i will tell you that uh we always take a 20 off of whatever we're being paid regardless of the amount we get paid $500, we take off a 20. We get paid $300, we take off a 20. Almost all bars will assign you a server. That server gets 20 bucks at least. If they're just, if everything's being handled by the bar, we drop a 20 on the bar every time. I know a lot of bands don't do that. And how you treat the help tells me everything I need to know about you as a person. So, uh, yeah. So, um, I'm going to just go out to SCA Bardic and pull it down because that's why I stashed it there. So, because I do not know what's going on with the USBs. This is actually my work computer, so it's way more locked down because this next part. There we go. The internet to the rescue. Okay, I'm going to share my screen in just a sec here. So, the other thing about set lists is they help you end on time. I know that 30 years ago when I started playing some of my first pub gigs, playing to one or two, and a lot of the bands were 10 to 2 a.m. Uh, and I'm reminded of Billy Joel's when I wore a younger man's clothes. 10 to 2 a.m. I can still do it. I don't know that I'm interested in doing it. Um, I live the furthest from all the band. Most of our gigs are an hour from me. And I stop and put the drummer, we pick up all the gear and we go off to a gig. So my bandmates are in bed before I've even, I'm even home. Um, sleep deprivation is a great skill to have, but it's just, it's not, you know, again, you have to decide, but if you are playing, if we're playing 10, if we're playing eight to midnight, we're being paid to play eight to midnight. Now, if we want to play an encore, cause we still have a crowd and they're going crazy. Sure. You're not going to say, well, I expect to be paid an extra 20 bucks, but your set list helps you hit it on the mark. I got paid to play to midnight. My set list takes me to midnight. We all wear watches. If you're playing a guitar, you wear your watch backwards. That's a trick I learned a long time ago so I can look at my watch without having to do this. Okay. Um, but your set list helps you end on time. And that way you've been paid to play X. You played X. Maybe you do one or two, one more song. Maybe. Sure. But also in some venues, when we are done, they're closing. We don't, you know, our fans, people who like music, they'll stay and listen for long periods of time. Our set list finishes us on time. The venue's happy. Everybody goes out. They close the doors. We finish our tear down. We go home. We get paid. That's it. So um, we always work towards being professional in your delivery, in your presentation, but most, especially practicing your art. And this performance and set list stuff is part of it. It's not just about I can recite all the words to Mary Ellen Carter Maybe I can even sing all the words to Mary. It's about everything that delivers that song to the audience at that moment. And if you can do those things, you can be very successful. The SCA is an incredibly forgiving audience. It's not tough to become reasonably well-respected as a bard in the SCA if you work at it a little, you know? So I'm going to share my screen if I can figure out. Okay. Share. Where's my document? There it is. Okay. So I'm going to, uh, can I unpin this thing? No, I can't. Oh, there it goes. All right. So we're already covered through most of this stuff. 
So I want to bring up, let's talk about set lists. Let's actually talk about this. And this is the, this is a big part of the interactive piece. And let me see if I can change this to read, uh, read view, read mode. Okay. So I've got a, can you all see my screen? Okay. So I've made a list of songs here. And most of these songs would be pretty recognizable to most of us, all right? So let's say you're going to perform. You need six songs out of this set. So let's start by, and I honestly, for some reason, the performancing is chopping slightly off my view. Go back to the edit document view. Yeah, okay. So let's just, and, and you can unmute your mics, and let's just, we'll all try and be respectful on talking, but if we look at this list, I'll read off the song names for anybody who can't see my screen, but Hotel California by The Eagles, Stairway to Heaven by Led Zeppelin, Billie Jean by Michael Jackson, Walk Like an Egyptian by The Bangles, Last Train to Clarksville by The Monkees, Friends in Low Places by Garth Brooks, Margarita Bill by Jimmy Buffett, and A Horse with No Name by America. I play all these songs except Walk Like an Egyptian and Billie Jean because it's beyond complicated to try and play something like that. But if we were to just pick, what would you say, if you have one song you're going to close a set with out of this list, what do you all think is the strongest song? You don't have to justify your response, just suggestion. Strongest song in this set. If I'm going to close a set, what do I want to close with out of this list of songs? Friends in Low Places. Good choice. Anybody else with perhaps a different choice? I'm leaning towards Hotel California, Hotel California Stairway to Heaven. I know they're long, you know, because I, I look at length too, and but they're much, they're almost everybody knows both of them. And there's no right or wrong answers here. These are all mega galactic songs that make the top 100, top 200 songs of all time. So there's no losers here. I'm okay. I'm at Last Train to Clarksville. Always fun. Mm -hmm. That's another good one, yeah. Can't go wrong with a monkey's tune. What would you say is the most recognizable song on this list across broad audiences? While these are all popular, well-known what do you think the largest number of people would, what song would they have heard of? Hotel California. Horse. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Okay. And maybe on this list, what song strikes you as being the most fun? Which one do you think the audience is going to gravitate towards or really, really love? Walk, walk, like, an, walk like an Egyptian. Walk like an, or Margaritaville. Yeah. Okay, those are two. Anybody else? There's no wrong answers. Anybody care to? There's more folks than that on the call. Okay, all right. So let's build a three song list. So we've got these choices here. So we think one of the strongest songs is Friends in Low Places, Hotel California Store, whatever. Yeah, those are all awesomely strong. So when I build a three song set list, I'm going to say, well, what am I gonna open with reserving probably the best song for the last? So what would you like to open your set list here with? Don't be shy. This is a good exercise. This is what you have to learn to do. I'd probably start with the horse with no name because yeah. everyone knows that song and it's, you know, a good. Oh. I was just thinking the same thing. I think that's, yeah, that too. would be a good starter. I, think okay. I was also wondering if maybe something to be up tempo and fun to draw people in. That's what I was thinking. Sure. Up tempo well, to draw them in. Okay. What's, uh, okay. So what, what are you thinking? Horse is my, so let's, in our setting here, I just want to be, horse with no name is a medium tempo song. Right. But what do you like for something? Well, it would depend on all of this, of course, depends on venue, like you said. Sure. So, I mean, if you're in a place where you want to get people up and jumping and having fun, I mean, walk like an Egyptian is just hysterical. <laughs> so We want to grab their attention, right? Sure. Yeah, and, so. and 
that people are, that's a pretty dang well-known song like you said so so we'll I'll tell you what we're gonna build a couple of set lists all right so let's do okay. this one i'll take i i think walk like an egyptian it's ridiculously fun and uh and and it is and again you're right you're 100 percent right um lynn is that your first name lynn yeah you probably okay. know me as sebastian oh okay so sebastian you're hundred percent on the mark with venue. So we're just going to, but this is a thought exercise. This is just something to kind of try and get the brain working. So let's go with, with walk like an Egyptian. Okay. So if we pick that as our up song, what are we going to close this set with? Anybody? Last train or uh, Margaritaville, something else up tempo, I would guess. Last train. My Anybody? guess. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else care to, Let's, okay, let's just do that. We're going to call that this set. Okay, so let's use Last Train. This is one of the most recognizable songs of the last 50 years. I got to see the monkeys, what was left of them. I got to see Peter Tork and Mickey Dolans play live right here in Dayton at a uh, great venue. And man, I hope I have that much energy on stage when I'm 70. They were amazing. I love Last Train to Clarksville. It's one of my all-time favorite songs. Okay, so with this set list, and what we're going to do is we're going to cut this blank. We'll make another. So we had Walk Like an Egyptian. So we had Up Tempo. And last train to Clarksville is up tempo. So what are we gonna do in this set list to put something in the middle? Definitely you want a different tempo. You Hotel you California. Things up. Okay. Put horse in the middle. Horse is medium. Hotel California is also medium. Care to vote? Anybody? Split the tie. I mean, How about both, Stairway both? to Heaven because it, it because it changes tempo and, and that kind of segues into the final song. It goes from <laughs> slow and then moves into fast, which make which actually gives you a progression. And it's also a minor where the other two are both majors. Oh, good, good point. Good catch. Very good. Those are some of the things I want you guys to see. Good, good. I think that that would be a very strong set. So let's make another one. Okay. Stairway, yeah, it tells you where I'm at. I don't drink enough coffee on weekends. I'm currently I'm drinking uh, Cider Boys Cinnamon Cider Mad Bark. Oh, I've got cinnamon vanilla flavored coffee. Oh, okay. Hey. So let's grab our set list here. And the magic of computers, and we just build another one. All right. So this, so let's talk about this set list. So this set list is going to be, this would be what I would call high energy because you've got, You've got a slow to a fast, so you're going to go slow to fast, and then you're going to go from fast minor into a big fast major. So this is – that's really strong. I think if you went and sat – if you had to do a little set in any bar where they, you were playing covers, if you played those three songs, people are going to stick money in your cup. Okay. So let's build a different set. I have a suggestion. Yep. Move the blank uh, set above the filled in one so that we can still see the pick the songs. Good, good call. That's smart. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So let's build a different set. Can't you can use those songs, but you can't use them in that order. And in my opinion, they probably don't work. If you flip that set around too much, it's going to get. There aren't a lot of options. So let's build a different set. So let's say we're playing. Well, venue's not super important to the discussion. What would be another good set? Let's just make this a set building exercise. What would be another good set? So always, what are we gonna what are we gonna open with? All right, I'll make a few suggestions. Billy Jean. Okay. Good choice. I, I and again, I only know uh, one cover musician I know of. But in Dayton, Ohio, we have this guy's name's Nick Mitchell. He is the king of covers. He has, he, if he doesn't know it, he has fake books as thick as my arm, and he can read a fake book and play the song, and he's stunningly good. He's a professional musician. He makes his living, pays his bills playing music, and it's just him and a guitar, no voiceover. No drum kits, no nothing. It's just Nick Mitchell and his guitar. He's the only person I've ever seen live who can play Billie Jean, but man, it's strong. People love that song, and I do too. Okay, so yeah. let's and let's California then. What's that? Yeah, it's good choice. It's also minor and it's medium tempo. And Hotel California 
is strong no matter where you play it, especially in our likely social groups. There's nobody. I, so let's put the last song in and I'll just tell you a little funny story about Hotel California. Okay. So we need something in the middle because here we have uh, Billy Jean. We're in the key. We're in a minor key. California's in a minor key. Well, I have a quick question. Yeah. Because you'd mentioned the, the whole middle song, Switch It Up, and in the last one we talked about, we did major, minor, major. Is it okay to have them all be minors, even if, I mean, because they're, they're different keys, even though they're all minors? Sure. And in one thing you could say about Hotel California is while it is in the key of B minor, the refrain, welcome to the Hotel California, that's, that's, a, that's an open G chord. And so while the song is very minory in the verse, the chorus is a little more. So sure, you could put another. Minor keys are strong. Minor keys, that dissonance of the minor key, and we'll circle back to a tiny bit of music theory. But So what do you like for the middle, middle song, Sebastian? Pick one. Hello. There's, no, there's no wrong choice. Well, I just... I feel bad because that shows the Hotel California for the okay. closer. So somebody else put a middle song in here. Margaritaville. I think that'd be an incredibly strong set. Margaritaville is a song that gets a crowd no matter where you're playing it. Um, I've played it at Penzik more times than I care to mention. Okay. So Hotel California, it's kind of funny. And I'm going to just scroll down to a little example. So, okay, first off, you guys are all thinking, this is what I'm hoping you get out of this, is to look at lists of songs that you are doing, or if you're bringing in, if you're going to learn a new song and add to your repertoire, is it a carbon copy of something you already have? Or can you add something that creates more color? Or sometimes I use the word, I like the texture. I want more texture in my set. The nice thing about that second set that we built here, Billy Jean's, this is one where more, I, the, the style is more interesting than the, than the key. Although I put Margaritaville as soft rock, it's probably not really soft rock. It, it, Jimmy Buffett is his own, his own genre of music. I don't know, nautically themed soft rockabilly. I don't know. I don't even know what to call Jimmy Buffett. I love all his music. I think he's one of the most brilliant lyric writers. He doesn't really conform. So this set is strong in that we've got an R&B piece. We've got a Jimmy Buffett song, and we're going to close with a soft rock, maybe the most successful soft rock group of all time. So my wife and I do a show. Oh, I didn't put that one up. Yeah. My wife and I do a show every Wednesday night. Um, we do a half hour music that we broadcast from, from our – our pub down. So we have a pub in our basement. We, I built an Irish pub in our basement with a stage and everything. Um, and we, we ended a set, we picked hotel California because really part of the thing about hotel California is if you play it, you can't really follow it with anything else. You will have the audience so mellowed out and so happy and so connecting with vibes that are probably very positive. Anything you could follow hotel California with would be tough. That's not to say it can't be done. Um, in our limited song list, if you were given the opportunity to play one last song after that, I'd pick Horse With No Name or uh, Friends In Low Places. Friends In Low Places is an incredibly strong closer, but if you close with it, that's one where you definitely probably can't play anything else after it that's not going to be it's clashing. Your it's yeah. your done song. It it's is your done song. Your done song. And we have one of those in Fintan. It's called The Traditional Irish Song by Dennis Leary. Uh, the traditional Irish folk song. It's from his No Cure for Cancer album. He performed it unplugged on MTV. If you've never heard it, it's on YouTube. It's just about the most ridiculous thing you can think. It's, a, a, it's, it's essentially a punk Irish pub song. It's a lot of loud singing and very fast playing. Um, and after we play it, we're done. There's no song to play after the traditional Irish folk song. There just isn't. So I mean, we... I mean, William, with the case, in the case of... I would say with friends and locations places, it is pretty much the, you can't stay, you, you don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. Yeah, yeah, can't, yeah, right. But it's good. Again, it's not a very hard song and it's very short. Um, you know, it's, uh, 
It's and it's it's only as long as it's listed 348. It's not really that long, because if you're on your own, you aren't going to have the Hawaiian steel guitar solo. And you also don't get to fade out, you know, basically the way that song is recorded, he just keeps, keeps singing, I got friends, and the engineer slowly pulled the faders off, and there's a two minutes of outro of him going off in the distance, which we can't do as performers. You can't just keep singing the end of a verse on a lot of these songs, because they you, you need to end. You're a performing it. And uh, I thought that the, like, Hotel California on – Hell freezes over. Their ending of it was brilliant, and that's what we. Was. But anyways, we did Hotel California, my wife and I, and my mom tuned in to hear us, and she had never heard of Hotel California, and my mother. It it doesn't. It, I was unsurprised, but my sister was dying. Mom, like I loved all those songs, but I didn't know that last piece. And so here's some set lists we built. So these are from. Uh, these are from three weeks ago and two weeks ago, I think. So this was a set list we put together to cover half an hour of music. And so The Gambler by Kenny Rogers is a big major key song. Another incredibly recognizable tune. Strong opener. John Prine had just passed away. So we did a John Prine song. All his songs are depressing. This isn't a major key. Only John Prine can make major key songs sad. Um, you know, it's like no matter how it's done, hallelujah is just, you know, it's just going to kill you. We always try and throw an Irish song in our sets. So this song, The Jolly Rove and Tar, is a big major sea shanty. It's also uh, very fast. Throw in a fun song, Wiper Blades by Haywood Banks. Again, if you've never checked this guy out, your life is missing something and you should go check him out. Here's another one of those songs you can play in the SCA and you will get every single person singing. Um, it may seem cliched. When I saw the Moody Blues live, there were about 5,000 people in the venue. Everybody singing that song at the same time with the Moody Blues was a real experience. Um, some of these songs aren't easy. Nights in White Satin is actually far harder than it looks. Um, this is a Irish drinking song called Drink It Up Men. And we had a little bit of banter there because in England, they still have these funny blue laws where the pubs close at 11 o'clock. And so your last call is at 1030. So the song is Drink It Up Men. It's long after 10. It's a Clancy Brothers standard. Um, Bye Bye Love by the Everly Brothers, just because again, it's a fun 50s recognizable piece. And we closed with I'm a Believer, a monkey's tune that Neil Diamond wrote. Um, and you can see the songs vary in time and tempo keys. So you had major, major but depressing, slow, major but fast, major but comedic, minor, very slow, major, moderate, bye bye love, major, very fast. And we did the two part harmony. And I'm a believer is just a song that's gonna carry you out of any set. And again, strong finishing kind of song. Mm -hmm. And you can see the timing here. And the other thing is, don't trust the timing. If you buy the song, if you plug it into your iTunes or it's on your phone or however you collect music, your timing and the timing of the song that you're doing may not be the same. Great examples of that are like, we were back up here, Hotel California. Hotel California uh, is listed as 632. But since Joe Walsh didn't stop by with Don... Uh, Don Felder to do the guitar outro for three minutes. We didn't have the luxury of our, ours was just shy of four minutes because we didn't have that outro to do, you know. So we we basically doubled the doubled the refrain and then we finished on da 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 just like they do it on Hell Freezes Over. And let me tell you something that uh, I probably haven't mentioned. These are your songs in your sets. I won't say that there are no sacred cows and probably turning Margaritaville into a disco piece is going to anger some listeners. Those are choices you get to make. But what I can tell you is you can adjust arrangements for performing based on what you have to perform with. So my wife and I have two voices, ukulele and guitar. That's it. I don't play lead. I'm a rhythm guitar player. I'm pretty good. But I, you, you know, lead guitar over uke. Uh, okay, so when you decide what songs you want to play, don't feel bad if you want to rearrange them. 
or modify them a little bit or change the key of the song so that it fits where your voice range is. Um, for those of you that play instruments, this is called, uh, let's see if I can get it to show, uh, it doesn't like it. This is called a transposing wheel. On the outside of the wheel are all the notes and on the inside of the wheel are all the notes. And so if I have something in the key of E and I wanna change it to the key of D, key of E, key of D, and that's where all the notes and changes chords go. I'm still working on my music theory and memorizing all this stuff. Avail yourself of tools, electronic tuners for your instruments, pitch pipes for your voice. There are a lot of people who poo poo technology. That is just foolish. I own a host of electronic and, and if you're playing an instrument, make sure it's in tune and don't be afraid to retune it between songs. You should be good enough not to have to do that a ton, but if it's out and you know it's out, probably the audience isn't going to know, but fix it. Because the other thing is your voice on key versus half step, you know, so there's like a big joke about bagpipes. So bagpipes are key to B flat, which is a terrible key for everything. On If you're a guitar player and want to play with bagpipes, you capo one in standard tuning and you're gold. But a B-flat is a 440 megahertz note. And really, bagpipes aren't a 440. They're like a 435. They've drifted around over the bazillion years because the way the instrument's made. Okay. If you have two of you singing together or playing together, if your instruments are in tune with each other, you get a lot more power. When you're working on some of these kind of songs, let me just suggest, while there are a host of great ska songs i don't know any of them other than maybe a few that i've written or a few that i've performed over the years or ska-esque songs you can play sea shanties and all that kind of stuff work on music that you like you will never get very far building out a song that you hate or don't care for very much okay so when you're working on some of these songs i can tell you i couldn't even tell you a horse with no name is one of my go-to songs at penzik you will catch everybody listening and it's just fine. I've never had anybody. I wouldn't enter it in A and S, you know, that, that, that's, that's totally, totally different things. But if I'm campfire walking and I'm cruising around Penzik and it's me and it's Finwala and it's Mistress Halla and we're roaming around playing songs, that's one that's always handy. Sea shanties, good to go. Stuff you like. Then adjust the song to fit your voice, your instrumentation. And again, if the song has big guitar solos like so we another song i really like is a song by neil young called powder finger if you've never heard it go give it a listen it's on it's from his legendary rush never sleeps album. It's an excellent song but neil young is a guitar player so he has between the verses these big guitar solos you can just take them out just break them out give yourself a couple of chords or a rest in your voice and then just continue onwards Nobody cares. Believe me, nobody, there's no Hotel California police. I mean, don't go in there and radically alter the song to the point where we can't tell it's Hotel California anymore. But believe me when I tell you, when you play Hotel California at a campfire at Penzik, the fact you've even attempted it and the fact that you could carry it off, the people listening will, will be happy for it, you know. And if it, you know, if you don't know period music, it's not the end of the world. And building set lists, I mean, we have a whole host of these kinds of things. And these set lists, which my wife and I are doing, I'm pretty sure we could play those at Penzik without too much trouble. Or any big event like that. Now, if you're going to go, again, if you're going to go do a performance of some kind that's judgeable, all right, but all the same rules apply. All the same rules apply. If I'm going to do, I don't know, we, we've done some, some earlier period music and some things like that, particularly all vocal stuff. Same rules apply. Tempo, key, style. You know, mix it up. If you have a good repertoire of period music, don't play five 14th century French pieces in a row unless they're all pretty different. Again, you have to understand in all of this too, your audience by and large doesn't understand anything you're doing. Most people feel like music instruments are out of their reach. And when you make mistakes, don't worry about it. Just play through. Believe me, um, the only people, you know, if, if I've come and seen you perform a hundred times and you gunch it or you sing, 
you sing the same verse twice. That's a common enough problem because we're thinking about a lot of things, right? Too many mind. So your fans versus your friends. Your friends will get a big laugh. And those can become inside jokes between you and the folks that see you a lot. You got to earn the audience every time. This is a step in winning over audiences because you come in prepared, you've got a plan, and you've got a set, two, three, four sets. And if you have some, kind, some of kind of electric, go ahead. go ahead. Or was that an echo? Might've been an echo. If you have a couple of these three sets, because you could take two, three sets and weld them together and shuffle a couple of songs. I use a program on my iPad uh, called Songbook Plus, with the symbol plus. It's expensive, it's $50. You can load PDFs, videos, and song files into it. I have over 600 songs with either sheet music or for those of you who play, like I call it a lead sheet. It's just the words and the guitar chords and I already know the tune. And if I don't, I have the MP3 of the song on my iPad. Somebody says, hey, can you do us, do you know, do you know this song? Oh my God, I haven't played it in 10 years. Hang on a sec. Okay, I've got it. Let me listen to it for a second. Oh yeah, that's how it goes. Boom. And it lets you build set lists. So I have Bardic Storm set lists. I have private play set lists. I have set lists for everything. And I pull them up on my iPad. And if you flip your iPad over to night mode, the screen goes black and the writing is white. So it doesn't blow up the mood. I mean, the ultimate goal is to be able to play songs without having to read off of something, but not everybody can do that. And it comes with time. So don't be, again, I have it in a nice little leather binder. It's pretty unobtrusive. My guitar does not have any obvious electronics. You know, I don't leave my tuner stuck on the end of it. You know, again, you can make your set and everything in your presentation be good enough, especially based on venue. Sky is so forgiving. So don't let, you know, if you've always wanted to perform, I don't know, Teach Your Children by Crosby, Stills, and Nash, another ultimately recognizable song. If you've always wanted to play, perform that song, learn it, I'm pretty sure it'll go over pretty big. We do Southern Cross a lot. That's a huge song that people love. And we've had great success playing, playing that. And anything, you know, again, Eagles songs, don't feel bad. Or Irish tunes, pub tunes, those go over big. Find your, find your enjoyment of it. But I have all these set lists, and we've, we've, my wife and I are actually tracking in a spreadsheet. We have every set list for every performance we've done since before St. Patty's Day, once a week. And we keep track of them, and this is how we build our set list. Once we get all the songs we want to know, so we're going to perform these songs, she and I sit down and go through this exercise. Okay, what are we going to open with? What are we going to close with? It's our middle song. You know, thematically, we kind of try and stick an Irish tune in the middle. An Irish tune or something funny. Now, this song didn't have, and we had a request to do Sitting on the Dock of the Bay, which is incredibly hard. I was really stunned at how difficult that song was for a song that sounds so easy. One, it's in a weird key. But so we, we had a request for that song, so we learned it in a week. Uh, but we did Can't Roller Skate in a Buffalo Herd by, by the legendary Roger Miller. If you don't know who Roger Miller is, go look him up. He wrote about a thousand songs in his career. Amazing, amazing songwriter. Uh, but so that's – in a nutshell, you could spend a lot of time talking about set list and how to work on it, but I encourage all of you to start putting some together. And if you want to ping me, hit me on Facebook. Um, my email is on my chivalry page on the Middle Kingdom page. Feel free to email me. I live on a computer more so now. I mean, we're all on computers a lot more than we were. And if you want some help or suggestions or thoughts, but try and lay your stuff out in some way that gives you this sort of thing, you know, that has some way that you can codify your songs so you can tell them apart. And, and, you know, I know people who've taken this to some extremes where they have, who wrote it? What's the actual, not just what's the tempo, fast, slow, medium. They've got the beats per minute, the artist, they've got, you know, every detail of the song. What's its genre type, you know, Hey, whatever works for you. 
that's the important thing is that you build this system, but conceptually this designing is, I don't know, all the bands that I know that have been around a long time, who play a lot, who perform out a lot, use a method like this. And again, everything you can do to take stress off of your mind as a performer, so you can just perform. I mean, you know, we all get, we, you know, everybody talks about recording is a good example. You can record yourself. I don't know how good of an engineer you are. I'm not a great one. I'm a pretty good one. I'm a better producer. But if I have to be the engineer and the musician, something suffers. Why do you pay studios? So I can go there and just play. I can just come and give my best performance. So when you're building out a set list, that's something that just takes some weight off your mind. Hey, I got a set list in my back pocket and I can do it. And I've practiced it. And practice your set lists. Don't just practice the songs. Practice your set list and listen to them. Record yourself. Throw your phone up there. Get somebody to listen to you. Offer suggestions. Have a thick skin. Understand that, you know, that you got to work on this stuff. <laughs> and, again, you don't have to. But your success will be direct, directly proportional to how much time you put into it, like pretty much anything else. All right, so I'm going to stop sharing here, and I'm just going to open it up for Q&A. One last question from my perspective. Sure. Um, some venues within the SEA allow mics and speakers. What kind of venues do you think work with that, and which ones would not? That's a great question. So sound systems, almost everybody uses too much sound equipment. Um, my band, which is a six piece, we have two 12 inch powered Mackie speakers and that's it. For yourself, there are some very nice small portable systems like uh, the Passport made by Fender. Fishman has one. Uh, Bose has a beautiful one if you want to drop 1300 bucks. It's portable. Sounds very good. Um, the Bose L1 uh, without sub is right about $1,000. There are lots of reviews of these systems. Um, something you can move yourself <laughs> if you need roadies. Uh, but you can even buy, Fender makes an amp called the DS-150 that's a combo amp. You can plug in one instrument and one mic. And you set it up. It's, uh, it's about the size of a small suitcase. It's heavy because it's Fender. Um, and that's a good thing. I'm a weight means that the, it, the, not just the construction of it, but the weight of the magnets and the speakers and all that good stuff. But uh, if you, c it, so I have a big loud pub voice and when we're playing with the group, there's four of us so we can carry it. But if I had my druthers for any kind of performance, I'd have a sound system always. Um, like I said, Fender Passport is nice, portable, uh, Fishman. There's new companies too, like Line 6. I just watched a terrific video where, where they've got, it's like a, it's a single speaker, plugs in like one instrument and one mic, portable, less than 40 pounds. Um, do a little research on, on YouTube or go out to Sweetwater. If you're not familiar, if y'all are not familiar with Sweetwater.com, Sweetwater Music in Indiana. They're just outside of Fort Wayne. It's the nicest music store. One of the nicest music stores in the country. Um, and they have people who will talk to you. But you don't need, when, when we first started the band, everybody had 15 inch horns or 15 inch uh, main speaker with 12 inch horn. And we're playing in a room that seats 100 people. We could turn that, we couldn't turn it up above one, one and a half. And so part of the thing about sound systems is, is they're not designed to run at extremely low volumes. So going smaller, will typically give you a better sound. Um, there's also some small portable amps for just your instrument. If you have a quiet instrument and you figure you can still sing your voice. Like I know some guys that play bazooki. Bazooki is not a real loud instrument. And what they do is they trick out a little wicker basket that they wear on their belt. And they've got a little tiny pig nose or a honey tone. It runs on like three AAA batteries. And it's, it's literally, I don't even think I have anything, you know, it's, it's just a little speaker and you can plug an instrument into it, and they've got amplification, and they're still singing, but their instrument picks up. And dulcimers and things like that, some of those. Just take some research. I like, uh, I'd love to own a Bose L1. I have no need. I have a Fender DS-150 for coffee house gigs. That's all the sound you'll ever need at any 
any venue in the SCA short of playing like an auditorium. At which point the thing I tell people is uh, find your local sound company and go rent it. Even in Fintan, when we play big festivals, if they don't provide the sound gear, we just go rent a great big crossover super sub and a couple of mains. It's a hundred bucks for the weekend. You get paid a thousand, fifteen hundred dollars plus what you take in sale. Yeah, it's worth it. Plus you don't have to store it or maintain it because having something that you only use once in a while, you know, our sound system gets used a lot. But for my personal, my Fender DS-150, I use it maybe once or twice a month just to play around with it. I haven't taken it out in a while. Bought it off of, uh, bought it off a friend. Facebook Marketplace can often be a good source of deals. Did I answer your question? Good enough. Okay. And I have this mental image of you not wanting the, the, the speaker down on low because you want it up at 11. <laughs> I'll tell you, I, uh, I've, been, I've been looking at a personal monitor system for myself. My band uses in-ear monitors, which are wonderful. If I ever go to Gulf Wars again, I'd love to play in that venue when I could hear myself. Lovely venue. And I, everybody loved it. I just, it was the strangest thing in the world to be sitting in a place where there was no sound feedback. It freaked me out a little bit. Luckily, 20 at that point 27 years of playing consistently kind of saved my ass yeah yes Other, i have a others? question sure. <laughs> hello um so i just kind of wanted to recap to make sure i get it so your opener should grab their attention say hey we're here whatever it is yep. high energy it grabs them and then your closer should be something to remember you by Yep. Another thing that will just strong, strong and strong, very strong. Okay. And then, so anything in the middle, like if you have maybe five songs, you still want to, rather than the three, you still want to have say the very center one, maybe slow or the second one, but whatever it is, they should be different tempos or different keys to just keep it interesting. Yes. Something okay. that changes the audio quality a little bit. Okay. You can have them all in the same key if they're different styles. Jigs in three are very different than reels in four. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You know that's that. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And one thing playing a, you know, if if we're playing Morrison's jig, that's a big minor powerhouse. Where if we played Barney Pilgrim, which is a big major and a little slower tempo, you know, you could you can do that. Yeah. You got okay. it. All right. Just making sure I got it. Thank you. Other questions? We got a little bit of time yet. Chris, Hi, Rosalind. Hey, how you doing? I'm um, good. If you're doing a set list for a CD, uh, is it pretty much the same, or are there any modifications? Pretty much the same. Uh, exactly the same process. We, like I said, we do it with cards. Your opener song. Uh, so if you. My band has produced seven albums, and you can see the evolution. They're all pretty good. Uh, they, you can see the evolution, but our latest album, Excursion, is a good example of the culmination of 18 years of band experience, 16 years of band experience to build an album. The same thing, a good catch opener. We used a song called Excursion Around the Bay, for which the album is named. Um, it's an acapella, but it's fast, big major chord, you know, and... Uh, build your set list exactly the same way. A CD is a performance. Mm -hmm. If you were going to perform that, so you've been, that's an auditorium performance because you have an, an audience that wants to hear that material. How would you perform it to follow these set list rules so that it's, it's smash, you know, again, and your CD, the nice feature of the CD is it can be the very best sound. Um, but you're a hundred percent in control. I was just going to, you think I'd know off the top of my head what our closer on that one was. I think I do, but I'm going to at least check. Um, let's see. What did we close that list with? Uh, excursion. Oh, yeah, we closed it with Lanigan's Ball. Rocky Road to Dublin followed by Lanigan's Ball. So Rocky Road to Dublin is minor key, super strong, super fast. Lanigan's Ball is also minor key, even faster with an outro that's faster still. Um, but again, you're taking a, the listener on a journey and on a CD, you know, when you're talking about recording things for yourself, you know, again, I started recording on cassettes where part of the thing you had to balance was 
you couldn't always make CDs nice. It's a set list that you can bang, deliver. On cassettes, John's smiling because he knows what I'm going to say. You had to consider the A side and the B side of the cassette because you didn't want to have to expend a lot of extra tape for which you were being charged. So when you made a cassette, you could, you could make your set list, but if one side had 20 minutes and one side had 40 minutes, you had to pay for 40 minutes of tape. And 20, it, you all, I mean, those of you who remember cassettes, you'd have the dead tape on one side or the other. So we shuffled songs around into little mini sets to get the timing, and then we arranged them, which was not always ideal. CDs, so much better. And they don't have to be, you've got 74 minutes. That's a lot of music. And something we generally, we, we did three albums with a professional outfit who taught us a lot, Malcolm Gibson and the Mighty Duke. Malcolm Gibson, amazing pro musician. I can't say enough good things about Malcolm, taught us a lot. But his, his label was called Buckatune. I said, why is that? He goes, we put 15 songs on every CD. We charge $15 for the CD. buck a tune buck a tune What the hell is that? Okay, 15 songs on a CD is a lot. That's a lot of songs. I strongly suggest if you want to try and produce a CD, go with 10 songs. You get away with eight. But 10 would be where I would go. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's exactly the same process. And like I said, do it with cards or post-it notes and work through it and get some other people. Let me tell you, my wife is a constant help to me, as are the wives or the significant others of everybody in my band who will say, hey, and our super fans, folks that troop around with us, who go to all our shows, who help us, you know, people who listen to you, go get some opinions. What you think of a song is less important than what everyone else thinks of a song. Absolutely. So, you know, and, and it's, it's just good. Get, get input and build your set list. And I promise, I promise, promise, promise. If you start working with three song set lists, you set yourself up for this. Put your songs together, learn them. Put your set list together, learn it. Three song set list you should have memorized. It's okay if you want to read from something, I get it. The three song set list you should have memorized. And from any three song set list, you should be able to do any of those threes as a single. Build yourself out three or four of those three song set lists, and then you can start knocking them together to get a larger, larger playlist. Looks like we got about six minutes. Question. Any other questions? Did I answer your question, Rosalind, before we? Oh, absolutely. Okay. I have one question on sure. CD set lists. You're saying, you know, 10 ish maybe 15 ish songs okay that w works real well if your songs are two and a half to five and a half minutes but what about when your average song is under two minutes long because you're doing period music and they're very short okay so right in those cases like especially like if you've ever seen there was a group in the middle kingdom i don't know that they uh, play much anymore but it was called music of subterranea they did a lot of dance music mm -hmm. so short loop where you just loop the song a bunch of times. Yeah, in those cases, so um, if, you're, if your songs were about, so 10 songs is typically gonna put you in about 50 minutes. So what I would say is instead of saying 10 songs, let's say 50 minutes, you don't have to use the whole CD, 40 minutes. Um, if you're doing period pieces, maybe consider doubling them. So you play through, is this all written music? So you, you play coda, et cetera, that kind of stuff? Yeah, it's, it's all period stuff. So consider doubling every piece just to give you a little more listening. Because the other thing, too, is people listening. Consider the audience. But, yeah, I, you're going to have more pieces at that point for sure. Yeah. She took the nope. words right out of my mouth because I'm a former member of the same group that she's in. And, yeah, I was going to ask the same thing because I've done enough set lists for that group, as well as putting our CD together, helping with that, with the first one and the one we're working on finalizing now and yeah it's a much different issue when your songs are the majority of them are under two minutes and um, if you were telling seven to ten minute stories you'd have less you'd have five maybe you know oh and, and to your earlier point earlier in the in the class we actually have scripted short very short bits uh and and we and i'm the one who started timing all of our songs in our group and it made a huge difference in putting together our set list and making sure we were much more accurate on roughly pegging about how much we need 
we tend to still, you know, a lot of times have to cut a song, but we always have some in the back, you know, we held back just as if we have to throw something in because we're performing faster. But our bits are mostly scripted and we think they're cheesy, but do, you don't have to think about it when it's one you do all the time. Yes, and that's the point. Um, and timing, always have songs you can cut, always have a couple you can add. So I'll leave you, if you think it's cheesy, I guarantee you this is cheesier. So we closed our album with Lanigan's Ball Live. We recorded it in the pub in my basement. We invited 20 of our, 25-ish of our fans over to be the audience because they all know where to clap and what to say. Recording live versus recording live, you can control, big difference. But here's what we did. So Lanigan's Ball is about a party that goes grossly awry when basically some, some lady gets insulted and then it turns into a great big brawl. But we always, we always, we have this little intro to the song. This is the song about the most famous dance party ever held in Dublin. And our bass player goes, bum, 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 you know, and I would tell a little story, but basically I say that the whole thing turned into pregnant pause, a Titanic disaster and everyone groans. And everybody is even expecting me to say Titanic disaster. And everybody knows, they know the joke. And yet it works every time. And it's so stupid. So don't feel bad. I mean, it's having that kind of stuff is what differentiates your performance and your dynamic as a performer. The time you put in is never wasted. And, uh, you know, hopefully maybe when we're all not isolated like this, we'll all get together. You know, I. I play music because I like to play music. It's, it's been my whole life is music in a lot of ways. Probably should have become a musician, but such as it is, it is my predominant music ho I mean, hobby. It's a huge part. And I've managed to figure out how to do it outside the SCA and inside the SCA. And I'm so committed to it. When I was king, from the 11 months, from when I won Prince, when my wife and I stepped up as Prince and Princess, to when we stepped down in 11 months, Fintan did not drop one gig. I drove to events at 2.30 in the morning from gigs rather than drop a gig. Those are choices. Those are choices that I made. I'm good at sleep deprivation. So this, this stuff is all really important. If you have questions, if you want to hit me up, if you're not friended to me on Facebook, feel free to send me your questions. If you got questions, please don't make all the mistakes I made. Make your own mistakes and then tell me about them so I don't have to make them. But really, I, I was taught by great, great musicians, many of whom are still around, and my goal in all of this is just to give you guys a chord dump so that you can go on your way and not have to just step. I mean, believe me, in 18 years of being a band, we started, nobody in the band had any band experience. Take, it, take care, Carrie. And, uh, <laughs> you know, we stepped oh, in every... I'm, stick, I'm oh. sticking around until you're actually oh. finally done. I just want to make sure I remember to say thank you. That's all. Yeah, okay. Anyways, we, I, we stepped in all the chuck holes. So please don't step in them. If you have a question, please ask. I will help. I'm available pretty much all the time. I love to talk about music. And if this continues for another month, I'll see about putting up another class. All right, we'll do a mix and match class. Anyways, I hope you all stay well. Uh, this will all be over at some point, And then we're all going to get together and do music. I promise. That's my goal. I'm going to host something at Penzik in my camp. And it's just going to be bring your shit. Bring anything you want, sing anything you want, bardic for bards, just go do music for one evening and care about nothing else. Okay? Y'all take good care. 